Okay, ladies, gentlemen, boys, girls, welcome back. Uh, this is a little bonus video, and like the last one I did, this is a companion piece to um, the last video that I released. I got some fluke in that session, but I also ran into some very nice porgies, and rather than cram that all into a very long video, I decided to split it into two shorter ones. So the goal was to try and get onto some nice jumbo scup if I can find them, and make a porgy sandwich, or as I'll call a scup sandwich, uh, for alliteration's sake, and met with varying degrees of success. So here's the video. I hope you enjoy. Make sure to like and subscribe while you're here, and let's get into the action. As soon as they hit the ground, it's like a mass of something under us. Porgy. It's the porgy, it's a very nice porgy. Oh yeah, that's that's a scup burger right there if I ever saw seen one. Damn, that's a nice fish. Let's go, let's go. <laughs> Damn, that's a nice porgy. That'll make some nice scup burgers. Alright. Yeah, we're keeping you. Let's get a measure just to be official. At least 14. Yeah, 14. Touch over 14. Scup burgers. It's, it's happening. Let's uh, bleed him out first, though. Do it off camera. I keep some scup today, and we got some scup. So let's do it again. See so if we can get like two or three more just so we can have like a legit sampling of burgers. But yeah, we're making some scup burgers tonight or tomorrow. If that's the only scup we get, I'm fine with that, but it'd be great if we can get like two or three more just to get like a legit, you know, platter of meat, but that'll at least give us like two good burgers right there, and we can always like supplement it with the fluke as comparison, but I think these fish are stacked right here, so let's go right over that again and see if we can get another one or two, and maybe another fluke, and then we'll call it. I don't want to be out here too long because it's going to get pretty sloppy as this tide intensifies. Since it's wind against tide, I'm pushing through the wind to move with the tide. Oh, damn, that's, that's probably another porgy. Fish finder is like blacked out right now. I think those are all just, just scup, like thick schools of porgies. Got a lot going on today around us. Alright, I've been grinding hard enough to get those porgies to take a three-quarter ounce bucktail, but we know they're there and they'll hit, but they just can't take that hook, and I know some of them are good. Um, I think we're gonna, well, what, we, what we did is uh, we're downsizing to a one-quarter ounce jig head, four-inch piece of gulp, uh, swimming wallet. Let's get it down there and see if this makes a difference. Things are stacked, they're not even deep, so quarter ounce is not gonna hold very well in this tide, but we just need it to be there for a second. And they'll annihilate this, and hopefully we'll grab another one or two nice scup. Get those porgy burgers going. Come on, Borgies, let's go. Let's go. One or two slabs will do, that's all I need. Then we can get on our way. They're so tricky. things can fight. These things can really fight for their size. Unless he's foul hooked, but even still. Oh yeah. Yeah, you're coming with us. That's chunky mama. Another 14 inch fish or so. 13, 14, I don't know. Let's get one more and then we'll be content with the scup. 
fun though. We're bleeding out this porgy. It's probably a little bit smaller than the last one I got, but still a very nice fish. And we'll get a couple of good little fillets off them. Uh, let's even get one more around this size and I'll be content with porgies. And then we'll take a few more fluke trips and we'll probably call it a day for the fishing aspect of this. There's just like a great wall of porgies down there. At least that's what I assume I'm seeing, but could be wrong. It's getting a little nasty out here, so it's just in time. We got enough to really do this experiment well, but one more would really... Jeez. They're down there. <laughs> The Great Wall of Porgies. Never has there been a more incredible sight. Come on. Take the gulp. Now oh, they're still there. We're just moving so fast, it's hard to stay on top of them. Get like one shot at them. That had to come to an end, I guess. Okay, welcome back to the kitchen. Uh, we are going to finish this video with the actual cooking of the porgies that we got yesterday. So what we're gonna do is uh, something I like to do with a white meat and fish like porgies. I've done this with fluke before. Uh, we're going to make some fish sandwiches or fish burgers. Uh, I think porgies are perfect for this because they're the right size to put on a bun. Uh, you don't need a lot of meat to make this and it's one of those things where I think it's greater than the sum of its parts. So before I get started, let me just run you through some of the things that we have here. So over here, uh, we have our station that we're going to put the, the porgies through. We have the actual porgy right here. Still a little red meat on there, but that's okay. Uh, I didn't want to go crazy with it. And I think a little fishiness might actually be good for this recipe. But we got some salt and pepper seasoning on it. Uh, over here we have some flour, which we, we will be running the porgy through first. Also with some salt and pepper. We have an egg milk mixture here for some binding. And then we have some panko over here. Uh, shake and bake will also work for this, but uh, panko should be fine. And then finally over here, we have our oil, which is going at 375 degrees and make sure that it's at that temperature. Definitely not higher, otherwise it's gonna burn. Um, and we're going to place that, the, the final stuff in there for about two minutes, three minutes maybe. And then we're gonna put it on a paper towel uh, and then we'll take it from there. So this should be really good. I love this with fluke and I think it'll be great with porgy. Uh, hopefully this will be a good application for what you can do with those porgies, particularly when you don't have a lot of them. So stay tuned. Okay, so we're gonna get started with our first fillet. So we got our porgy fillet right here. Uh, I think perfect size for a little fish sandwich. So first things first, we're going to dip it in the flour, get it nice and coated on both sides, like so. That looks about right. We then put it through the egg milk combination. Ooh, it's slippery. And then finally, we're going to run it through the panko Make sure it's good and covered on both sides. Get a good, you know, crusty finish on both sides to get that real crunch. And then we're just going to slowly lower it into the oil where it's going to cook. Yeah, we just let that fish cook in the oil for a good two, three minutes. We don't want to overdo it. Um, yeah, and I should rec I should mention, uh, I did not come up with this recipe. I will make sure to link where I got this in the description. Uh, but this is a real winner of a recipe. You will not be disappointed with this. Uh, let this stay in there for another two minutes and then we're going to get this uh, on the paper towel and I'll show you what we do next. Okay, it's been about two minutes, three minutes, and look at that. Golden, like bronze, I guess. Might even be a little overcooked, but uh, it's not burned, so that's the important thing. And we're just going to let some of that excess oil get off. 
We're just gonna place that on the paper towel to soak up some of that rest of that oil. And here's the last part, and this is key. So we're gonna put just a little bit more salt on it, just drizzle it on there, not a ton, just to let that, you know, marinate in there with uh, the hot fish and the oil. And we're just gonna cover that and do the rest of the fish, and then we will bring you back for plating and then the, the final taste test. Okay, we are back and we have cooked all the fish, so now there's the, your favorite part. We are going to construct our fish sandwich porgy style. So let me run you through this. Uh, we got our porgy here. I'm gonna take one of the lighter pieces. The oil, the, the oil did get pretty hot, but look at that. It looks just, just great, doesn't it? Like golden, perfectly fried. Uh, so that's our base level. Uh, we're then going to put some pickles on there, like so. We also got some cheese here. Now some people might say cheese does not belong on fish, but I disagree, so I'm gonna throw one or two slices of cheddar on there. Then finally we got this homemade tartar sauce that we're going to drizzle up top, just like that. Doesn't that look great, folks? I hope it tastes great. Never done porgies like this before, but I have a, a strong feeling that this is gonna be just right. Look at that. Isn't that just a little slice of heaven right there? Never gonna look at porgies the same way again. So the only thing left now, of course, is to dive in and try it. So here we go. That definitely does not disappoint. The porgy is really just perfect for this. Excuse me. Um, that is a filet of porgy of 14 inches. So not a huge porgy, but that is just one little slice that's perfect for like this potato bun. Um, the thickness of the meat is just perfect as well. Perfect texture, just a slight fishiness, but overall delicious. So this is a new one for me. I hope you guys add it to your arsenal. I think this is a perfect application for porgies if you don't get a bunch of them. Uh, and you know, it's one of those things, again, greater than some of its parts. Two of these, great dinner, little side of coleslaw or salad. What more have you asked for? Thanks for watching as always. Please make sure to like and subscribe if you haven't done so already. And thank you to my fish and accomplices that have already been subscribed since the beginning. You know who you are. Catch you in the water next time. Goodbye.